Prince Hussein Aga Khan has been taking beautiful photos of the natural world for a very long time, and I first was blown away by these at, I think, the Science Museum, indeed, in the Smith Center of the Science Museum, and Hussein, we're really delighted to have you, so do, do come up. Thank you. I get so terribly nervous. Um, I see environmental degradation all the time in rainforests and on coral reefs and with hooks in the mouths of sharks and so on and so forth. Thank you so much for having me here today. And I'd especially like to thank Cameron, who invited me out to see me butcher a speech last year. My dog had died, travel plans changed. We arrived at the hotel at 10 p.m. and I barely had time to rehearse. Visibly shaky and terrified on stage, I realized I might just be intimidated by scientists and policymakers and economists. With unthinkable floods, horrific fires, melting ice and sea level rise, bleached coral, failed crops, the extinction rate skyrocketing, and more looming in the background, the exhibition you'll see outside is a little more cheerful. A breath of fresh air, kaleidoscope of color and form, this is a celebration of life on our planet. Entitled Indo, this collection of images stem from two trips to Raja Ampat in Indonesia. Sometimes referred to as the last paradise, located in West Papua province, Raja is one of the three most biodiverse places under the waves in the world. In that regard, Papua New Guinea and Indonesia are superlative. At one resort alone, they've identified 2,200 species of fish and over 600 species of coral. Every scene here is in technicolor, every sight a gift. Fancy corals, fish, graceful mantas, and beautiful invertebrates reign supreme. <clears throat> Evolution is more than visible in certain species, such as the wabagong, a type of carpet shark, which would look just as good on your drawing room floor as on the reef. Bumphead parrotfish, outlandish looking creatures, the males of which compete by headbutting each other. Leaf scorpion fish that are wafer thin come in green, yellow, or purple and spend their lives sitting on their pectoral fins, swaying side to side in the current. Thousands upon thousands of magnificent species living in fantabulous ecosystems that have so far been pristine. But the health and purity of Raja Ampat are no longer guaranteed. My dive buddy and I witnessed hundreds of pounds of plastic waste on the surface in the south. The resort I mentioned earlier, one of the best in the world with its own conservation organization, witnessed two significant bleaching events last year, and more are sure to come. No place on Earth is truly safe anymore, not even the farthest flung tropical havens on the other side of the globe. No ecosystem is invulnerable, no species immune to changes in climate, habitat, or food source and few creatures thrive and flourish in heaps of trash. Only cockroaches and raccoons come to mind. So while I certainly hope you enjoy the show and revel in the beauty of it all, I also hope you will keep in mind that we've lost half our coral reefs since the 1950s. We're likely to lose another 90% within the next two decades. And it seems we will massively overshoot the 1.5 degree warming limit we've set ourselves. <clears throat> Floods in Pakistan, fires in Hawaii, Australia, Canada, and even Norway have become the new normal. And we will only reverse or slow these awful trends if policymakers, scientists, in fact, every one of us, contribute as best they can to bring about significant and lasting change. We have the science and technology and brilliant minds. As a conservation photographer, my job is to showcase our natural wonders and make pleas on their behalf. Aside from working on my footprint and doing conservation through my organization focused on nature, I can only do so much. But I know and see many of you who can do much, much more. I sincerely hope and ask that all of you will do just that. I have massive faith in you, and thank you for your work and your time. <clears throat>